Jane Hammond is an American artist born in Bridgeport, Connecticut in 1950. Language has always been important to Hammond, who was the editor of her high school literary magazine and studied poetry and biology at Mount Holyoke College before earning her Bachelor's of Art in 1972. After studying ceramics at Arizona State University, she received her MFA in sculpture from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1977, she moved to New York and began compiling images from instructional or scientific manuals, children's books, books on puppetry and magic, as well as charts on alchemy, animals, religion, and phrenology. From this collection, she culled 276 images that functioned as her image bank for subject matter. Self-imposed restrictions played a major role in Jane Hammond's art. In the past, she has limited herself to two standard sizes of canvases and titled her paintings only by strings of numbers determined by her compositions. This was Jane Hammond's problem. The titles of her paintings were becoming too cumbersome. When she was starting out as an artist, she didn't want to get pigeonholed by curators and critics, so she sought freedom and restriction on her own terms. Limiting herself to a vocabulary of 276 found images that she had compiled over time, she set to work making paintings that are variable and cohesive, structured yet with an element of randomness, depicting her Im Im imagination as much as the world around her. But then she titled them untitled, followed by parentheses enclosing, enclosing the numbers by which she had cataloged her found images. You can see the predicament posed by rather complex pictures. She hit upon the idea of soliciting titles which then might act as catalysts to her imagination and she decided with some trepidation to approach the poet John Ashbery whom art critic Peter Schwalladal recently described as being famous for the soaring abstraction and pitch perfect vernacular of poems whose meaning is anyone's guess. A week later, he faxed her 44 titles which have inspired Hammond to make just more than 60 paintings. The painting I saw at the Detroit Art Museum was Mad Elga No. 2. Mad Elga No. 2 is a spiral of 63 pictures, heads, bridges, dice, flowers, based on a child's game. When creating costumes and guises, Jane Hammond plundered the storeroom, jumbled everything together, and then painted them one by one on her game board shaped canvas. The game board is named Juego de la Oca, which translates to Goose Game, which is actually pretty ironic since trying to find a translation for the instructions in the middle leads you on a huge goose chase. I literally could not find a single translation of them. According to Jane Hammond, the game is based off of a game she found once called The Game of the Goose, which is a game that involves racing your opponent through the 63 decorated squares to the finish line, with each square representing some occurrence that could put you in jail, uh, could give you a gift, or push you farther ahead. Jane Hammond is now living and working in New York City, where she still creates these strange and magnificent works of art. These works of art include her dabbling in the works of monoprinting, lithography, silkscreen, intaglio, collage, painting, and many more. But she is primarily a painter, and you can even catch her speaking at a few colleges. The works around Jane Hammond's Mad Elga 2 are two rather similar styled pieces. The first one is R.B. Kitat's Glance, a oil on canvas from 1992. And the second is John Keane's Group with Dead Wolf, an oil on canvas from 1988. All three of these works of art are oil on, oil on canvas and seem to share a common technique of how the paint was placed and the sense we get from it is like a rough texture. It is actually quite astounding how three different artists seem to share this same style.